Hi everyone, welcome to Carlene Love Tarot. Welcome to my channel. I'm so excited, so happy that you found your way here. Please don't hesitate to click the subscribe button as well as the gray bell so that you receive the updates whenever a new video goes up. Otherwise, let's dive into this timeless reading for you and um, the message that you need to hear right now is, and you can choose from gazelle, hummingbird, or earthworm. So gazelle is of the fire, hummingbird is air, and earthworm is earth. And feel into whichever one you feel drawn to right now, whichever one is speaking to you, um, saying whatever to you, <laughs> whichever one pops out at you. Try not to choose your favorite animal. Really try to choose the one that you feel drawn to, okay? All right, if you need more time, don't hesitate to pause, okay? But we're going to get started, and we'll start off with the gazelle. Okay, okay we, we have here the gazelle, and the gazelle is known to be one of the fastest animals on the planet. It runs very, very fast. It's a sign of gracefulness as well, right? Um, gazelle, Giselle, <laughs> like these names kind of, kind of seem to play on, on this, this connection to this animal here, right? But, um, it's an animal in Africa. It is extremely fast. It's graceful. It's slender. It's lithe. It really knows how to work the energy on its body to get maximum effect. Um, it's known to be very vulnerable, very tender, very sweet, very gentle, right? And um, it, it is really almost too innocent for this world, right? So this is being... I also feel... Um, you know, it's connection to fire, like fire is also very, it can be very vulnerable at the beginning. Um, it really knows how to shift energy, work with energy, right? And it's also very quick to start, very quick to put out. And a gazelle can only run so fast for so long, it can sprint. But it's, it's not like a long distance marathon speed runner, right? It only has the energy that it has and its body makes immediate minute calculations that get it immediately into safety and out of danger, right? So there's something here about the immediate effect of will and how this willpower that you have, right? Whoever chose the gazelle, I feel this has to do with your willpower and it has to do with how you harness that willpower, how you feed that willpower, how you nourish that willpower. What do you surround yourself with that feeds your will, that supports you, that supports what you endeavor to do, what you choose to do, what you, or your dreams, your goals, your hopes, right? That which you're racing towards and you can only go in short sprints at a time. But how are you nourishing your body? How are you taking care of yourself? How are you taking care of your mind and what you think in order to do short sprint after short sprint after short sprint to reach your goal? How do you feed your will? How do you strengthen your will? How do you discipline your will, right? So these are all things I feel this is a theme that is coming up for you. And you may be someone who is very jumpy, you know, very nervous, very um, flighty. It's like someone says the wrong thing and immediately that triggers your red flag and you're like, I'm out. <laughs> Something becomes too difficult or too hard or you're sloughing away and you're like, you know what? Maybe this is a sign I shouldn't be doing this <laughs> and I'm out. So it, it, it's like um, flight might be one of your reflexes or your responses to dealing with things, right? It may be to withdraw, it may be to flee, but there's somehow gaining distance between you and whatever it is that you see as a challenge, right? So gazelle might be um, here to also, for those of you that are like, nope, I'm the complete opposite <laughs> because it's two sides of a coin, you know? So some of you are going to be the absolute opposite where you stay and stay and stay and stay and stay. And gazelle is here to let you know that, you know, it's okay to move. It's okay to leave. It's okay to run. It's okay to gain distance, right? gain distance between whatever it is that you feel is a challenge 
um, that is blocking you from doing whatever you need to do, right? So how do you harness your willpower? Do you let your will be usurped? Do you let it be taken over by someone else? Do you let others dictate your will? Now, these are really interesting times that we're living in and going through where having willpower, acknowledging your willpower, accessing your willpower is really, really, really important. All right. Let's have a look with my trusty viking cards <laughs> um what is the main theme for the message for you please what is the main theme for those that chose gazelle what is the message that they need to hear right now and we've got braggy and Wortgewandtheit, or um ease with words and he was a bard this one that is being shown and depicted here and of course there's a long story behind him i don't want to get into that too much just you can look it up b-r-a-g-i it's just uh let me get this to focus one second i turned off the autofocus because i didn't want it going in and out in and out zoom 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 <laughs> but um here we go come on oh no it's not working okay and, and oh yes it is well it did for a second anyways <laughs> sorry but um we have here braggy and we see this bard sitting by the fire telling tales of old right and he really knows how to spin a story he really knows how to speak and what's interesting is here's fire showing up as well so we know that stories can make their way around the world really fast we know that information is easy to bring across in a story sometimes easier in a story than just telling someone directly you know and if you add music to that it really um it goes beyond all the ego defenses right music is one of the most beautiful ways to get to people you know because there are no words and there are no concepts that can be triggering or raise defenses right so we have here someone who's able to weave words into music and this you know causes warmth but this fire can also burn and it can cause transformation it can burn and it can um, leave marks, right? So it's it's something, your words are very powerful. That's what this, this card is saying. And that woven in with poetry and music, it can weave beautiful things and make people feel a certain way. But it can also be something that is very, you know, damaging or hurtful. So both of them showing up with fire here, I find really interesting. I don't know if you guys are Aries, Leo, Sagittarius or have that in you, those of you that have chosen this, but it feels that you're very strong-willed people and that spirit is trying to get a message across about how to harness your will, um, how not to, you know, um, cause a, a real big fire, rampant, out of control fire with your will, but to use it to warm, to use it to energize, to use it to strengthen something or create some kind of a transformation. Okay, so let's dive in with the tarot cards. And I've pulled out the soul cards again. I kind of missed working with them. What is your message, lovies, little gazelles, to find your path what is your message what is your message what is your message what is the message what do they need to hear right now and i'm starting off with a basic overview and then diving deeper of course <laughs> so what is it that you need to know right now what is it that they need to know right now what is it that they need to know right now Okay, so I'm feeling like one, two, three, four, and advice, which are two cards, okay. All right, so overall the energy here, we have the Knight of Cups, okay? And the Knight of Cups has to do with love. It has to do with... Um, you know, this atmosphere of love, this atmosphere, this tender romantic atmosphere, a tender romantic um, a feeling, a tender and romantic way of going about things. It's very soft and it's very joyful. It's very peaceful. And it's not an atmosphere that is built to last, right? 
So this is probably what the challenge is going to refer to, and we've got judgment. Okay. All right. So the overall atmosphere, we have the Knight of Cups and judgment or renewal. Those of you that chose the gazelle, you might be hoping for a reconciliation. You might be hoping for a renewal. You might be wanting someone to pour water on your mills in the sense of making some kind of an effort or coming towards you in some kind of way. You're hoping that someone comes on a white horse or your white knight in shining armor and, you know, restarts things or helps you move out of a certain condition or move out of a certain way. So overall, that seems to be the energy here. This is also the energy of, um, it's almost like they're so opposite because these are two different forms of love, right? One is very tender and romantic and very, very vulnerable and fragile. And the other is like the strength of archangels, you know, coming through and, um, the strongness so there's this strong romanticism the strong desire for love here okay so let's see what's going on what is the message that you need to hear we've got the two of swords and we've got the death card and i'm going to turn them in a way in a second so that you can see it we've got the empress and we've got the star and let me turn this this way and I hope that you can see these better okay yeah they have a way of reflecting that is very difficult <laughs> um, so we've got the um, the main theme here what this is about is the two of swords now two of swords has to do with laying low it has to do we can see what's interesting on these cards as well is the eyes say a lot we see sometimes little eyes that look like they're closed, like this one here. It looks like a little eye. Right? And then we have other ones that look like they're open, like on the judgment card. See? So it's um, we have a closed eye on the Two of Swords. And the Two of Swords has to do with peace. It has to do with harmony, right? But it also has to do with not making a decision. It has to do with taking your time. It has to do with waiting for things to fall into place. It has to do with waiting for the right decision to come through. And it seems that either way, going forward or backward, saying yes or no, opening or closing, going up or down, it's, it's all the same. At this point, you can't see... Um, for better or for worse. You can't see a pro or con. It seems like whatever your choice is, whatever you're choosing to do, both pathways seem equally good or bad. And so you're taking a time out possibly to really um, figure things out, to really think things through. Now, on the outside, people may think that you're running away from a situation. You may have ghosted someone or someone may have ghosted you. This is a vice versa reading, right? So whichever way it fits for you. But the Two of Swords overall is indicating that right now is a time of peace. And right now you may not be in contact or you may not be talking to whomever you're thinking about while you're watching this, right? So you might not be talking to them. What you shouldn't be focused on is the Death card. And death has to do with transformation and renewal. We know this, right? And so what you shouldn't be focused on is rushing through things, is, is bringing things to an end quickly so that you can revive them with a judgment card here and then move on, right? And just pretend like it didn't happen. It, it feels like what you also shouldn't be focused on is an overly negative outlook, an overly negative way of seeing things, an overly negative way of perceiving things or how things might turn out for you, right? Um, you shouldn't be focused on that. What you should be focused on and working towards is strengthening your sense of self, the empress. And you can do this through creativity, right? through um, arts and crafts and all of that and just becoming really mindful and really aware of yourself, really aware of who you are and what you're bringing to the table and what your values are and what you're about, right? Some of you may have to dig a little deeper into the maternal line, into the matriarchal line, into your relationship with your mother, into what you were taught as faith, right? What gives you faith? What makes you strong, right? What were you taught 
to ground in on when when the going got tough. You know, a lot of people are now really anti-religion, but when we think back to the old days, um, a lot of stories, like hard stories, were only overcome by people's faith, by their belief. And religion, in that sense, had a strong place, right? And part of the things that was so important for, for parents to teach their children was for their children to have something to believe in, to hold on to when the going got tough. And we don't really have that anymore, right? So we look to material things and we try to find solution in the outer. But the old people were right, you know, the solution is in the inner. So what is coming down to you as a gift of strength, of faith, from your maternal line, from your matriarchal line? Have a look at that because it will lead you to the star. And this is a positive, optimistic, balanced, healthy, wholesome outlook, right? And this is having your mind always in a high place, aligning yourself to a higher principle and a higher value, and asking yourself as you move forward through life and all your experiences, does this line up with my principle of truth, loyalty, integrity, love? And if it's not in alignment with that, why am I dealing with it? Why is it in my life? So these are all questions that you can be asking in this period of the Two of Swords, right? Where you're taking a kind of a time out to think things through, you know? And again, people might be thinking you're running away, gazelle, you know? You might have to talk your way through or out of things or around things, right? You may have gotten into the situation because your words caused fire right? And they ran away with you faster than you could, you could hold them back. So th this is all something to consider or think about. And we have the two advice cards here. And the advice is the seven of cups, which is illusion, maya, false choices, and the sun, which is beautiful. This is a beautiful closure to this. But the sun is representative of success, joy, and happiness. And we can see this has a wide open eye. It's even more open than the judgment eye, right? It's wide open. It sees things for what they are and accepts it and is fine with it. The seven of cups has to do with pink colored glasses and illusion, right? So be wary of this. Whatever it is or whomever you desire to return or come to you or come towards you, knight of cups, right? And, and revive judgment. Be mindful that um, this may be, you know, you don't want to fall to illusions. You want to be happy. You want to be powerful. You want to be strong. You want to be whole. You want to see things for what they are and be able to accept that truth. Because that is what makes you free. And another thing I want to say is that whoever I'm speaking with, you may have psychic abilities because the combination of star and the sun, right, reveals truth, as well as add in some judgment here, um, the judgment and the death card, right? So you may be working psychically, you may be psychically gifted in some way. You may um, be thinking about working like that, and you'd certainly have the gift of the gab to do it, <laughs> you know, to, to be able to bring it across in a way that people are able to accept it, you know? So it's, it's what are we doing with our willpower? What are we doing with our words? What are we doing with our gifts and our talents, right? Do you feel like time is running away from you? What have you been given or what has been passed down to you through your matriarchal line, your maternal line, in way of strength and faith when the going gets tough, what makes your mind turn into a star of positivity in the darkness? Stop focusing on death and negativity. It's not getting you anywhere. Right? And once you mature as the star, you know, you don't just twinkle in the heavens anymore. You become the nourishing, giving sun. Right? The sun is a star grown up. <laughs> That's your message, you guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope it resonated with you. Please don't hesitate to drop a comment below, book your session, drop a like, and a share. Talk to you soon. Bye.
Now, those of you that chose Hummingbird, this is one of the most, you know, it's a very delicate creature and um, it's incredible how much delicacy, like all three are very delicate creatures, right, that you had to choose from. And the hummingbirds, they're really small. They're only about like this big, maybe, you know, maybe, right, as big as the card, possibly. But um, they're very small, delicate creatures, but they, they flash with color and with light and their feathers just reflect the light in so many different shimmering ways and they hang in the air and they hover and they're just these sparks of being, of beauty, of joy, of there's no reason for their existence except to bring joy, except to bring joy, which reminds us of the joy in life and that life is about joy and that there are some good things in life too, not only hard times and negativity. So the hummingbird has become known as a, a also a psychopomp in a way. Um, people think that hummingbirds are representative of signs of their loved ones after passing over, for example, right? This is coming in under the element of air, and air has to do, of course, with mental processes. It has to do with the mind, right? So we have here a mind that can sit still in the state of joy and suck the nectar and the honey out of life. There's no going forward, no going backward, no doing nothing. It's just still in a place of peace and joy. So let's put this here. And I feel that whoever chose Hummingbird, this may be a message, you know, that you're hoping to bring you sweetness. You're looking for the sweetness in life. Speaking of the sweetness in life, some of you maybe, you know, um, you need to check your sugar or there's someone in your life that you feel or that is diabetic. Um, you know, it might be in your lineage, something like that. But um, it feels like there's something about the sweetness of life and needing to feel that again, to sense that again, to taste that again, to be one with that again. So let's see what the message is here for you. I also want to say with the hummingbird that, of course, spiritual energies are close. They're very near to you. And um, positive helpers are all around you right now. All around you. Okay. I also want to say that you come from that frequency and that vibration of joy and that it's really important if you feel you've lost it to do whatever it takes to regain it and then to maintain it and don't ever lose it again. We have to do things that strengthen and nourish our soul, right? We have to do things not only that are materially worthwhile that bring us money or anything like that you know stability security and all of that we also and we knew this as children right so we do things that were just making us happy that was just making us happy for no reason we do it because it just made us happy <laughs> and our soul would get deep pleasure out of that right so here we are as adults and we've forgotten how to do that so it's really important that you take the time to make yourself happy bring yourself pleasure and this is exactly what this card is about too. And this is Oski. This is an aspect of Odin on which the old Saint Nicholaus Santa Claus stories rest. And this has to do with fulfillment, the Nine of Cups, right? And so we see him coming around the corner um, through the woods in the snow, right? The um, squirrels which bring the nuts, the hazelnuts and the the walnuts and all of that and he's ready to gift he's got a big bag with him here and he's ready to bring gifts and blessings right so this has to do with fulfillment and i feel that those of you that chose number two it's time for you to receive a gift gift and a blessing again it's it's been a while and it's time for this to come around for you and there's a deep desire in your heart and your soul to receive something good to receive something finally going your way now some of you may already have experienced that right something just went your way or something is um I don't mind that behind me it's just my dog resettling in case you actually hear that on the camera <laughs> but um you've probably recently have something good that is that has gone your way 
But I feel for the most of you, it's a wish that you're harboring in your heart and your soul. And this is basically telling you, yes, it's going to happen. It's coming. I just have to check and make sure he's good. <laughs> like, are you good? Are we good now? <laughs> so let's see what the... Um, what your message is, those of you that chose Hummingbird. What is your message? What is coming up for you? What is your message? So, the main message, we've got the Knight of Wands. That's flipped out. So we're going to put that right there. What do they need to know? Hummingbird. Okay. These are really flying out here. Advice. We've got three advice cards. And for some reason I feel like doing that. Okay. And we've got the moon. And the ten of cups as the overall energy. Okay. All right, those of you that chose number two with a hummingbird and fulfillment and sweetness, it feels like you guys feel you're afraid that you're not going to get what you want, right? You're afraid that because the moon is fear and illusion, and there's a deep fear regarding the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups has to do with emotional fulfillment. And there's a deep fear here that I'm not going to receive anything that makes me emotionally fulfilled. I'm not going to find that partner. I'm not going to get that relationship. I'm not going to get that job. I'm not going to make that money. I'm not going to make that trip. Whatever it is that you desire, there's this deep fear in you that you're either unworthy of it, and so that's why the universe is not going to give it to you, or you feel that it's, it's just not coming to you because everything is unfair and the odds are stacked against you. And it's almost like you need this reassurance. You need to hear. You need a sign from God or you need a sign from deep within that tells you everything's going to be okay, that everything's going to come your way, that everything is going to happen the way it's meant to happen for your best and highest and most absolute good. But right now you're trapped in that fear, that belief, that mindset that things are not going to work out. They're not going to come your way. They're not going to happen the way you desire. So... For some of you, it's the complete opposite, that in spite of your fears, everything went well. Everything came through, right? In which case, be happy, you know, celebrate that, right? Of course. So let me put this over here. But this seems to be the energy. Some of you are also worried about your relationship. You may be married. You may be in a long-term relationship, Ten of Cups. Have a family with someone, Ten of Cups. And you may be very afraid, the moon, that um, this this is somehow now irreparable or something has happened which is going to take them away from you. So you may have be battling a fear of loss, right? Some of you are afraid of losing someone, something that is very valuable to you. And um, the main focus here is the Knight of Wands. And the Knight of Wands has to do with changes. It has to do with high drama. It has to do with um, a lot of things just happening out of the blue that you can't control that cause your trajectories to change. The Knight of Wands is also a lot of gossip and talking and, you know, chatting around. The Knight of Wands is high energy. This is Aries, Leo, Sagittarius in its immature aspect. So it's all over the place. It's not settled. It's not committed. Some of you may be dealing with a Knight of Wands, you know, and this is causing you uh, butterflies, right? You're not sure. Are they committed to me? Do they want me? Are they going to stay? Are they going to, are they going to settle down, right? Some of you, it's, it's, should I settle down? Should I stay here or should I move? Should I stay with this person or not? But there's an excitement in the air, a freshness that comes in with the Knight of Wands as well. And the next card, what you shouldn't be focused on, is trying to tie someone down, the devil, right? Trying to manipulate or, or be manipulated, trying to force something that is not there, trying to manip control someone, right? Or be controlled. 
here we have the half open eye right so there's an awareness of what we're doing but it's not a full awareness okay so it, it really feels like um, there we go oh. like a half open eye see so it really feels like there is um, the consciousness of someone here has been harnessed right so we don't want to focus in on that on toxic connections and relationships on relationships that are based in control and madness you know and this this need for high drama and changes all the time and fluctuations and non-commitment that we see that as somehow intensity of passion when it's everything but that and what they want you spirit is to focus on is the emperor and the emperor is solid energy it's rock solid it's the four it's the essence of the energy of the four and the four is all four corners north south east and west it's all four elements earth air wind uh earth air fire water right it's solid it's something that is committed stable it's the basis on which all life can grow and build and thrive and without this stability, without this strong foundation, nothing can happen. Nothing real, nothing lasting, nothing worthy can happen. And so as you realize this, hummingbird, you might be thrown into a nine of swords, right? Really overthinking things, thinking this through, being lost in your mind. Do I have to do what I don't want to do? Do I have to experience what I don't want to experience? Do I have to endure what I don't want to endure? Do I have to go through this? Eli, Eli, Lama Abzaptani, God, God, why have you forsaken me? So there's a little bit of a, um, a thing here, okay? With, I want to say, emotional maturity in regards to relationships and I want to say that um, a little bit of codependency as well pops its head with the devil and there's a little bit of a having to realize that for anything to work in life there has to be a solid foundation there has to be a solid commitment to whatever it is that you want to do be it your work be it raising children be it your family be it a relationship there has to be a commitment there and if you're not willing to commit, it's not the right situation for you. If the other person is not willing co to commit, it's not the right situation for you. Everybody working on the same image has to say yes, right? The advice card here is, or the cards are the Seven of Swords, which has to do with stealth, sneakiness, getting away with things, not telling full truths. Then we have the Five of Wands, which is sexual chemistry, but it's also lots of arguments and fights. And we have the Three of Cups, joy, reconciliation. This feels like, you know, um, on again, off again relationship energy. This feels like someone who's always coming and going. This feels like, you know, we argue and then make up two weeks later and the sex is hot, right? And it's hotter because of all the drama and the arguments and the strained emotions that are building up to this. The toxic devil energy. The fear of loss and abandonment. The fear of being alone. The tears. So I feel that your time is coming, little hummingbird. Okay, this is your time and the wishes are here, you know, ready to be fulfilled, but you have to be mature enough. You have to be strong enough. You have to be willing to let go of this devil energy, let go of the drama, um, welcome boredom, right? And some relationships, even though they might be boring, <laughs> They're stable, they're reliable, you know, they're not something that's going to bring the fear of God into you to the point where you're so afraid of happiness, where love and torture, love and torment are tied together for you. 
like the moon and the Ten of Cups, where it's so normal, you know, to be suffering in love, that if you're not suffering, you're not bleeding, you're not feeling. Let's see here. What is the final outcome to this, please? The final message. The Eight of Wands. Move quickly now, child. Move quickly. Move quickly. Eight of Wands. Communicate swiftly. Move swiftly. Make things happen quickly. Don't think too much. Don't get lost in this Nine of Swords energy and overthink things and overthink and overthink and overthink. No, be done. Be free. Be the hummingbird. Make sure your mind learns to dwell in peace and in love. And that love is joy. Love is sweet. Love is like the nectar. Love feeds and nurtures. It doesn't steal and take. It doesn't suck you dry. Nine of Wands, be strong. Build your boundaries. Fortify your boundaries. Fortify your mind. Fortify your will. Fortify yourself. One last one, please. Last one. Yeah. Here we have it. Ten of Swords and Two of Cups. Whatever situation you're in, my loves, be it a work situation, because the Two of Cups can also represent contracts and agreements. But if it's bringing you pain, Ten of Swords, we need to end this Ten of Swords. Right? We need to, we need to stop. Okay, so... I'm sorry for that message, you guys, but it is always love and it is always light. And um, sometimes we like the pictures that we've drawn and painted, but sometimes we don't and we start over again. And that's how it goes. Take care. And don't forget to like, comment, share for those of you that would feel would benefit from this reading or book your session below to see how it can go on for you. Thank you. Okay, my little earthworms, you chose earthworm. And earthworms are so beautiful. Like they're undervalued um, and not underestimated anymore though. They're more than just hanging on a fish hook. They're more than just fodder for a fish to feed the fish to bigger predators. <laughs> but um, we have here the earth sign. And the earthworm is known to toil, and it toils and works hard in darkness. It toils and it works hard with its vulnerability in a very, a very um, harsh environment, actually, for its body. And yet that's where it thrives, in the earth, winding around stones and rocks and gravel and um, in the earth. It's, it's, it's amazing. Life is amazing. And yet there is where it brings its light and its creativity. And through its very existence, and it is blind, it does not see, right? It doesn't know about itself. It doesn't know about life. And yet its existence, without it, no life would thrive. So if the earth one was created and it was made this important, how much more important is your life? The earthworm is also, you know, you might be feeling a lot of shame, right? You might be wanting to bury yourself in earth. You want to might be disappear yourself or something like that, you know? Not, not that, you know, not that ultimate thing, but just hide away from the world, right? But there's a lot of shame here and there's a lot of low self-worth, low self-value. And the earthworm shows us that, you know, without us, there is no life. And we don't even know what our life is about. And we're not questioning it. We're not digging into finding meaning or anything. We're just being. We're just existing. And look how important we are in spite of that. So how much more important are you? What's coming up, please? What is the message that these 
little earthworms need to hear? What is their message that they need to hear? What is their message, please? Oh, look, Iduna. Now, the earthworms have to do with renewal, right? So they renew the earth. As they move through the earth, they churn, they turn it over, and everything gets refreshed, reoxygenated. Here we have Iduna, who also has to do with renewal. She also has to do with the renewal of the seasons, the cycles. She holds the golden apples, the only food that the gods eat. She's the one that harvests them and brings them to the gods. I feel, little earthwormies, that some of you also have to take care of yourself physically, okay? There is something here about nutrition. There is something here about what you eat, how often you eat. There is something here about taking care of yourself and your body and really diving into that. Explore what it means to love yourself by feeding yourself only nourishing foods, good foods, loving foods, exploring how much better you feel and how does that make you feel as a person in life. Our bodies are so important and they have been neglected for far too long for many of us in our lives. They've just had to function. They've just had to be there and do their thing. But our bodies have a separate awareness and consciousness. If you've ever watched a cut heel, if you've ever, you know, scraped your ankle or your leg or your knee or your elbow and watched how your body patched it up with not even a scar sometimes, that has to be a consciousness. That's an awareness that you're not in control of. So we have to, just like we respect other people, we have to respect our own bodies, right? Our bodies are just as trapped with us as we are with it. <laughs> so how about we make life good for one another? And there's some kind of a renewal that's happening here for you. Maybe it's in the springtime, little earthworm, but it feels like, you know, there's a an understanding that's growing within you. Something might be changing or turning over within you, a way of seeing things, a way of seeing yourself. But also finding renewed hope. We've got swallows and cardinals and butterflies here, you know. Finding renewed hope in your life, in life itself. Let's move on. Let's move on. There's something I want to say also about hard work. You guys feel like hard work and hard givers. Um, you may be working in positions that are beneath you. You may be underestimated in your family or feel underestimated in your circle of friends or how people see you. Um, you may be seen as being vulnerable, yes. You may feel very vulnerable, much more than what people recognize. Um, but you feel like, you know, something's got to give here. Something has got to give. I can't, I can't, you know, keep living like this. I've got, I've got to do something different. So let's see what that difference is. This is what you're focusing on or should be focusing on. What they shouldn't be focusing on. Outcome. Advice and the overall energy and atmosphere. So there's there's a kind of um, fatalism here, right? Because we've got the wheel of fortune, and the wheel of fortune has to do with destiny. Yes, you know, has to do with what life brings you. But there's also an energy of fatalism. Like I'm just gonna leave myself to the winds, 
and not really taking up the strength, the power, um, the responsibility, all of that, you know, or controlling too much, desiring to control way too much, hanging on the wheel too tightly. And we have the Ace of Wands. There has to be a new beginning here. Okay. There has to be... This reminds me of Jesus take the wheel, that saying, right? <laughs> Throwing your hands up in the air and saying, God, like, you know, do something. There has to be a new beginning. Ace of Wands and the Wheel of Fortune. Okay. I'll put this over here. Now, what you're focusing on or should be focusing on is the Three of Wands. The Three of Wands has to do with a positive outlook. It has to do with expecting goodness in your life, expecting good things to come to you, and not really questioning why they're coming to you, you know, not doubting that they could come to you, but just really just expecting, just taking it for granted that something good is coming your way. What you shouldn't be focused on is the King of Pentacles, making it too materialistic, you know, some of you, you set your goals materially very high, and then when you don't reach them or accomplish them or your hopes are not fulfilled or you feel like, I didn't fulfill what I was supposed to fulfill, I'm not in my life where I'm supposed to be, I don't have that house, car, yacht, and, and everybody else does, and then you feel bad about it. I'm not worthy. I'm not king of the world yet, king of the pentacles. Then we have the Page of Swords, learning, acquiring knowledge, wanting to know why, needing to know more. The outcome, we've got the Temperance card, Transformation and Alchemy. The Advice cards, we've got the Hermit, I'm just going to put them like this. The Three of Cups, the Page of Pentacles, and the Two of Wands. All right. I feel like I'm speaking with someone who is kind of withdrawn and um, to themselves, may have been isolating for a while. I feel like they've been on the inner search, right? They've been learning. They've been trying to acquire knowledge. This is someone who's very, for some reason, what pops up for me, of course, the hermit represents Virgo, but I just feel very clean. Like you may have been cleaning a lot in your house or cleaning a lot in your place, you know, isolating and keeping everything clean, 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 right? And it also feels like there's almost this, I've, I've run out of hope. I've run out of goals. That's what I'm feeling. Like I had these goals, but now they don't mean anything to me. And it's not even like I'm looking for answers. I'm looking for a new goal. Right? So it feels like the advice here with the hermit is to um, never stop searching, never stop looking, never stop desiring to learn or desiring information, never stop um, wanting to know what everything is about. Never stop looking for that within yourself, that light within yourself. And when it comes to what you should be focused on, we've got the three of cups, right? Or shouldn't be focused on. And so it, it, it seems that the king of pentacles or king of the world and three of cups, shallow joy, sharing things with friends, going out on the weekends, you know, I've got this money, this is my house, this is my car, this is my la la la, but also belonging to a set or belonging to a certain specific kind of group, you know. Don't focus on that. Some of you are tired of being loners. You're tired of being the standout. You're tired of being the odd one out. You're tired of being different. And so now it's time though, the page of swords and the page of pentacles to start asking the right questions. The Page of Pentacles uh, Swords is all about questions and seeking answers, and the Page of Pentacles is building foundations, creating new things, right? So you have to ask the right questions to build your new foundation of understanding of how you see the world and your place in it. And once you have that going, you know, this will alchemize everything, the temperance, right? Transformation, alchemy, patience, time. And we've got the Two of Wands, new positive outlook, 
new opportunities, new way forward, new doors open, new people pop up in your life, new things show themselves. But we've got to let go of this fatalistic way of seeing things that it's all my destiny, you know, this is just my fate, just my karma, it's just Mercury in my fifth house, can't do anything about it, and take the wand of power and of will, ace of wands, be inspired, burn bright. So, one more card for you guys. page of wands now you have the three pages right you've got to take the first step if you take one step towards the universe the universe takes 10 steps towards you okay one step towards the universe the universe takes 10 steps towards you page of wands you've got to take action you've got to take movement so your overall story little earthwormies, Iduna, goddess of golden apples, <laughs> is it's time to stop playing small. It's time to stop underestimating yourself and underestimating your role in the destiny of all things. It's time to recognize how important you are, whether it's bringing apples to feed the gods or turning the earth to make things grow. It's, it's you've got to realize that you are super important, that you are a part of this whole thing and that without you you know certain things the work cannot be completed without you certain things cannot be fulfilled without you right doing whatever it is you do in your community just being you in your family in your day-to-day -day, this whole tapestry of life would unravel it's a very fine weaving and it's time for you to start asking the right questions, not assuming the wrong things about yourself because you're not living up to house, car, yacht, travel, this, 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 that, 20,000 in the bank. Just, you know, like it's time for you to really acknowledge, acknowledge the spirituality, the hermit, the truth, the core of life and what this life is really about, what your life is really about. And once you start asking the right questions and you start building the right foundations and you take that wand of destiny and you say yes to your specific life, no matter how that may show up, no matter how that may present itself, instead of comparing yourself to manufactured images, things are going to take a real turn for the better for you. Things are really because now you're not fighting life anymore. You're not fighting your life anymore. You're in the flow of it. So everything you desire can just flow to you. It can just flow down that river of life, that flow that you are floating down and it will find you. It will knock you over. It will hit you in the back and surprise you. It will be there for you. But as long as you're resisting life and you're hanging on to branches along the way, along this river, you're hanging yourself on a stone and screaming, help, help. <laughs> you know, whatever is being sent down river by life after you, you know, if you see yourself as an emanation going out from the source of life, then the source of life sends after you whatever needs to find you. It can't find you because you're hiding behind that rock. You're hiding behind this belief. You're hiding behind this false assumption of yourself. So it's time for you to acknowledge that, you know, your life is valuable and it is worthy. And as you are valuable and worthy and as you acknowledge your own power, of course, it gives you a little bit of responsibility, right? Responsibility. And you have to own it. You have to step into it. But this will lead you to a major transformation. And all of a sudden, all good things, doors, opportunities, potentials, possibilities, they're going to open themselves up to you. They're going to open themselves up for you. You guys, thank you so much for listening. I hope that helped. And um, if you would like to hear more or get your own personal reading on your own personal messages and pathway, don't hesitate to uh, book below, right? Please forward this video to those that you feel would benefit from it. And um, I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.